macaroni with the chicken strips. So if you guys like Destiny 2 fashion, you've probably already seen this video right here, and that is the Faceless Hunter video. So that video is by Boneless Revenge, great guy, and it's a fantastic video, but when I was watching it, I felt a little left out. I'm not a hunter main, but I'm still a very edgy boy, and I thought, maybe I could make a Faceless Titan video. And I also recently released this short video right here showing off a good amount of my sets while also memeing on Bungie. So you guys kept asking me tons of questions about all of the titans in that video and I've been slowly making videos on those titans and now it's time to make a video on the black titan in that video. So I did switch around a couple of things with the look to make him even better than what you saw in the picture but if you like the picture better don't worry I will still be going over that armor as well. Don't forget to subscribe if you like Destiny 2 fashion, and now, let's get into the Faceless Titan build. So to start this off, let's go with the helmet because that is the main piece and that is the part that makes him faceless. So he's going to be rocking the Iron Will Helm, which you get from the Iron Banner, and I have on the Amethyst Veil Shader. So I actually love this helmet. I really do wish that I can go back to it for at least a little bit, and maybe I will rock this for a little bit. But anyway, so... The Iron Will Helm is actually really freaking dope because it just, it's simple. It's, there's no like craziness to it. There's no like crazy glow. There's no weird unshaderable areas. It's just what it is and it shades very, very easy. No surprises anywhere. It just kind of takes whatever you put on it and it just does whatever you want it to do. So yeah, that's what makes him faceless and he's got nothing going on. I honestly don't even know how the Titans see through this thing, but it looks dope and I love it. So for the arms, I am rocking the Iron Samaki gauntlets. I hope I said that right, but these gauntlets I have on the Shrouded Stripes shader because it, whenever I put on Amethyst Veil on it, it had a little bit of blue going on in the under part right here where the cloth is. And while it's not too distracting and people aren't really going to notice it, it distracts me and I'm kind of picky like that. So that's how we went with the Shrouded Stripes because this shader just makes everything black and it's nice. The only downside to using this shader would be the actual stripes, but you can't see those from far away and I don't really mind them. So the reason I like these gauntlets so much is the same reason that I liked the other gauntlets in my past builds. It just kind of sits flush with the Sunbreaker plate and there's no like crazy extruding things from the shoulders, no giant pauldrons. They just are what they are and they look pretty dope and they're thin armor pieces. And as you know by now, I tend to go towards the thinner titans nowadays. So yeah, these were perfect for that. And then from there, we're going to go to the classic Sunbreaker Helm. If you've been keeping up with my builds lately, I'm not going to lie to you, I've been using this a lot, but it works. It really does work. If you haven't bought the Sunbreaker Eververse set yet, I strongly, strongly recommend it because I practically use this all the time. But yeah, so I thought that the gauntlets in this case worked perfectly with the Sunbreaker plate because the Sunbreaker plate does have those golden shotgun shells right there, or as someone called it in the comments the other day, they called it my crayons that I eat during battle. <laughs> but um, yeah, this has a little bit of gold in it. It's just a very small detail, but hey, it helps balance out all the gold in the shotgun shells and the rest of the gold that you're going to see on the rest of the armor here in a second. And for the legs, I'm rocking the Bulletsmith's Ire Greaves. So you get these from the Scourge of the Past raid. And I practically use these for everything, and they work whenever you go for the plated builds on your Titan. So I strongly recommend these if you have them, or if you're watching this in the future. These are going to be one of the first things that I transmog for my Titan. And the shader I'm rocking on them is Amethyst Veil. I don't really have to worry about these too much as far as it changing colors on me. It's all metal, and Amethyst Veil just makes grays and blacks out of metal. We're not seeing any cloth here so no weird blues. Actually, I forgot to mention, we are rocking Shrouded Stripes on the chest plate here, um, just because if we do rock Amethyst Veil, like I said, it makes a whole lot of blue in the cloth area down here, and that just kind of throws me off, so that's why we are rocking the Shrouded Stripes shader. And lastly, for the mark, I have on the Lux mark. So the Lux set wasn't all that great whenever it first came out, 
but I ended up using it a lot more whenever we started going for the thinner armor sets. It's just an easy mark to shade when it comes to making Black Titans. It's thin, it has some shotgun shells right here to match the shotgun shells on the Sunbreaker plate, and it's just a dope mark. It's not too flashy, it's not in the way, and it doesn't have any crazy unshadable areas. So now, if you're looking at rocking this set, but maybe you don't have all of the armor pieces, since this build is centered around the helmet and the helmet is what makes him faceless, we're not really going to go over replacements for this. If you can grab this during any Iron Banner, I strongly recommend it. For the arms, I do have a couple of replacements. One replacement that I see right off the bat is going to be the North Light Gauntlets. So, like I said before, these gauntlets just kind of sit flush with the chest plate. They're not crazy, they don't really extrude out that much, and they're not in the way. They just look good. And if you are ever around during the Christmas event for Destiny, I strongly recommend that you pick up practically any of the Northlight sets. All of those have been super useful throughout the years. So yeah, Northlight gauntlets with Amethyst Vel, a good replacement for sure. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, what could it use for the chest plate? Now the chest plate, you have several options, and I've talked about this in other videos before, but the option that immediately sticks out to me would be the Moonfang chassis. Like I've said before, it very much mimics the Sunbreaker plate as far as shape, as far as usability goes, and as far as how easy you can make it fit with other armor pieces. The main strengths about this chest plate are the collar. The collar fits so well with this helmet. I almost ended up using this chest plate instead of the Sunbreaker plate. The only downside being the yellow stripes here. Those kind of threw me off to be honest. But if you don't have it, you can easily go to the Prophecy Dungeon and go acquire this. And bada bing bada boom, you don't need to pay any silver to get this. Now, if you are a fan of buying Eververse sets, a set that I would recommend that you buy is the Celestial Titan set. I mean, I've talked about it extensively by now, but it is a very, very good chest plate to use for this build. I love the fur that goes around the neck area. And if you don't have the Iron Samaki gauntlets, the Northlight gauntlets actually, in my opinion, fit way better with the Celestial Plate. Because they are a little bit bigger, because the chest is a little bit bigger, that way you kind of balance that out a little bit. So yeah, Celestial Plate with the Northlight gauntlets, both very good options. Now let's say you don't have these legs and you don't really do raids a lot. One of the classic things that you can probably do to replace them, easy, Dune Marchers. Dune Marchers works good with everything, and these are obviously going to be very useful if you play a good amount of Crucible. And when I'm rocking this build, I, this is actually what I look like. I don't really rock all of this together because I'm not really rocking an exotic when I rock this build. So yes, I do actually end up switching to Dune Marchers whenever I actually have to do something in the game. Now let's go over some replacements for the mark. For the mark, we do have a couple of replacements. So one of them that I almost picked actually would be the Amalon mark, which is a future facing mark um, currently in the Eververse store. It's easy to shade, it just works, and I mean, it just wraps around your waist pretty easily, doesn't get in the way, doesn't distract you from anything. Another good part about it is that it does have a little bit of gold right there and what I assume to be like one of the bolts or something. So that does help balance out all of the tiny pieces of gold that you see throughout the armor set. The next replacement we have is the Celestial Mark. If you had that Celestial Plate earlier, the Celestial Mark is going to be a good replacement for you. I'm a really big fan of the horns from the Ox going around the Mark. They look really dope and really manly and really scary, you know? And also the Mark just looks pretty dope as far as like it glowing and stuff. Um, it is a little bit distracting whenever you're looking at it from behind, but whenever you're looking at it from the front, it's not that bad. Another replacement that I used in the original build, I'll pop up a picture right here, and I was using this mark originally, and it did fit perfectly whenever we used the Celestial Plate, but whenever we started throwing on the Sunbreaker Plate and then the Iron Banner Arms here, it started to look a little bit out of place, but still, not a bad mark. And if you're into fashion like I am, you probably do have a lot of the donning sets, so you should have this mark. If you don't, what were you doing? It was a good set. So yeah, that's my build. I really like this build a lot. Um, like I said, there are a good amount of chest replacements that you can use and arm replacements, but I feel like I finally refined the faceless titan look here. I also feel like a build like this really accentuates our Guardian's personality a lot more. I mean, for the longest time, our Guardian never talked. He stayed silent during everything. He was just this hero that just did everything he was told. And I feel like this build really works for him just because he never talks. He, this dude just straight up looks like a silent protagonist. He just sits there, 
watches what everybody does, watches what the Vanguard does, and then the Vanguard tells him to go kill something, and no questions asked, he just goes for it. Alright everybody, so that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button to see more videos like it, and don't forget to like the video also because it really helps out my channel. Don't forget that I also have a Discord server in case you guys want to show off your fashion or you're looking for some help on your fashion. I think we're almost done with all of the titans from that video you saw. We just have two left. Give me some time to refine the other one with the welded brass shader on it. The Halloween one will come, well, sometime around Halloween, so keep an eye out for that. Warlocks, don't you worry, I am working on a build for you guys, I just need to make something amazing. I've made several looks now and nothing is knocking it out of the park just yet, everything just looks average. Warlock fashion is really really hard to do, so just give me some time, I promise I will find you something. Don't forget to check out any of those other Titan and Hunter builds down below, and Guardians, as always, stay beautiful.